So, oh. so uh, the the body shop I was gonna go to for uh, to get the truck certified is down the street from my grandfather, my mother's father's grave. So, decided to stop by up there. Uh, yeah, Salvatore Fredo. 1939 to 1986. I haven't been here in a while, uh, but I think I'm going to go visit my other grandfather that passed away at the beginning of the summer because that's like close enough to here. And then I think I'm going to see my dad's grave with my buddy tonight. So, I'll talk to you all soon. Have a good one. So, I'm at my, uh, of my step grandfather's cemetery mausoleum and like I cried at my mom's death and like I don't think I've ever cried there because like I didn't know him he died six years before I was born but like while I was driving up here like, there's a little tunnel here and like the last time I was in this fucking the last time I was in this cemetery and I drove through that tunnel was in like the, the, the whatever the fuck the procession I think that's what it's called and I was in this truck I was in the passenger seat and my dad was driving because we were the pallbearers for this one rough it's fucking rough <sighs> this hit me really hard because the last time i was here was like the last time i actually spent time with my dad and like Tony wasn't like my actual stepfather or step grandfather. It wasn't my actual grandfather, but like <sighs> this some bitch was in my life since '94. That's fucking 28 out of 30 of the years. <sighs> like <sighs> like the fun thing is, is someone got lost so I actually directed them to the chapel so it's a good thing I came for their sake but it's fucking hard hi uh, welcome to a brand new Brendan's car talk it's been a while it's been a while but uh yeah for real it has um Okay. <laughs> uh, I know it started a little vulnerable, uh, but I think that's one of the appeals why people like me because I am an honest and open person. Maybe a little too open, a little too honest. But fuck it. Uh, yeah, since the last time I did this, my dad's passed away. This past weekend marked two months since I found him unresponsive. Sleep in my bed, actually. So I was at my nana's today for Thanksgiving, and I I saw on her mantle, like, all these dead relatives. And it's a little fucked up. It's a little macabre. But, like, like it's a bunch of old people. A bunch of people I don't even know. Some of them I do know. It's like 2000. Don't know that person. But 2013, 2009. I, I kind of remember these people being in my life. And then my step-grandfather. Who is like the bit of the footage you saw before this. And then my father. Like. No one said it. And I'm sure no one actually thinks it. It's just like my mind. But like. I do believe that some people are like, 
Brendan talks about his dad being dead a lot. And, like, that's my way of reminding myself. Like, I'm literally in his truck. That's my way of reminding myself that he isn't alive. He's not on a trip. I, I had a, a fun stuff in Barry last night that uh, I'll put clips into. And uh, I wanted to call him and tell him about it. And I wanted to, like, show him. But, like... I'm not going to be able to. And it fucking sucks, but... Like, even that... The stuff I'm doing... Not just in Barry, but in, like, wrestling in general. Son of a bitch, I tried to turn this off. Why is the power going on this? Um, I'm just controlling my narrative i'm just taking uh, i want to know what the fuck i want from life because i don't know what i want and i felt like i didn't deserve anything but i've worked hard for no actual payoff and like i'm i'm not saying that as like i deserve more or anything like that it's literally the opposite of that it's i i assumed sorry for the camera stuff but i hope you're still listening I assumed everyone would work hard. Everyone said they wanted shit. I literally would be surrounded by people that I thought were going to be way more successful than me because they wanted it. I, I've never wanted a contract in wrestling. I've never... Fuck, I'm just going to hold the phone. I've never wanted this stuff. I've just done it because it was fun. I, it's exciting. And I believe, like, if anyone can do it, you can do it. Like, wait, I have this little stand here. Hold on one second. Sorry, and his memorial card is actually right there. Um, yeah, it's just now I'm at the point that I have worked hard, and I also see the business of stuff. Which, by the way, Patreon.com/slash Brendan C. B R E N D O N E the letter C. You'll get this video early. The car talks as podcasts, and what I'm going to do at least until the end of the year, because I just have a bunch of content I need to put up. There will be a video a day. There will be live streams on almost every weekday. I'm not wrestling as much, but I think I'm doing the best work of my career. Uh, I think I'm the most believable wrestler in Ontario. I'm the most fucking relatable wrestler. I'm not the best, but I check off a lot of boxes. Gabriel Fuerza is the best in fucking Canada right now. <laughs> uh, and that isn't self-deprecating for myself. He's legitimately fucking good. He's worked so fucking hard in the gym, his food, training, wrestling. Like, his matches are fucking awesome. Uh, that's a kid that deserves fucking everything he's been getting and way more. But, like... Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out. And, like, there's a lot of things I... I do think it's better to do things in a group or with other people. But, like, you can hold a table for ten people at dinner. But if no one shows up, you're there by yourself. So I guess, like, this is, like, my little motivation to just fucking do it. I don't care about what people think. Like, the fact that this is raw, yeah, I'm editing in some clips, but there's no intro to this. There's going to be no outro to it. But, like, this is a bare minimum, and I think, like... If the quality of the content is good, like, the other quality can come later on. So, and, like, I want to be a motivation for people. I already am an inspiration and motivation for people. So, this is the first of a lot of stuff. <laughs> I make plans with people. Make plans to see people re-engage with people but also most importantly re-engage with your fucking self find yourself take yourself out on dates remember your likes and dislikes remember what made you happy remember what made you mad and sad and do less of that shit so i think i'm gonna leave it off on there uh since my dad passed away i've actually done comedy so much i've done it almost 10 times in the last three four weeks so i'm gonna leave you with a clip of that some stuff from barry yeah.
Like, I'm honestly so grateful. I, I got to record a couple podcasts tomorrow, uh, the Instagram live, such like that. But thank you for being on my team. Like, I guess <sighs> there's two thoughts that have been in my head. I'll leave it on film this. One, like, it's fucked up. I found my dad. I tried to give him CPR, and that clearly wasn't going to work. He was dead. But my my mom's dad died at 47. My dad's dad died at 50 or at 65. And my dad died at 56. Like, in my mind, like, the males. I'm almost guaranteed to make it out of my 30s, but then 40s, 50s, 60s, like, there's no guarantee to 70s. So why the fuck not live every day to its fucking fullest? But then the other side that fucked me up, I realized, was... My sister has my mom and my nana, my grandmother, to talk to. I don't have a child. If I ever have a child, like, I'm not going to be able to go to my dad and be like, dude, I fucked up. Uh, how do I change a diaper? How do I do whatever? Uh, he's not going to be there to make fun of me and, like, talk shit about me. And, and like, it's just also, like, the biggest thing I wish I asked him was what does he wish he knew from his dad? And there's some personal stuff that doesn't need to get said in here. Um, you think I'm open publicly. Go listen to that fucking level four shit on my Patreon. I'm way too open there. Uh, but, like, I confronted him about some stuff, and he chose to ran run away. He didn't have an updated health card. He wasn't vaccinated. Like, he didn't have the best intentions for his own health and then kept stuff. But that's my... My whole family has issues with keeping secrets. My... My mom's had a bunch of health problems, still alive. My sister uh, has no health problems, but it's she, she keeps up to date with her health. Uh, she had complications uh, about her second pregnancy right before my dad died. But, like, my family has a tendency of ignoring things for too long, and especially that's why I'm so open. <sighs> But yeah, these have been the things going through my mind, and now I'm just at a... I don't care. It's not that I don't care, because I care a lot. But I'm realizing what I need and need not to focus on. So, once again, I'm truly grateful for all of you for watching this, listening. It's fucking five people, ten people, twenty people. I don't give a fuck. Thank you. The daily vlogs-ish are going to be very open and honest, and you get to see the journey into madness. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm going crazy yet, but maybe that's something a crazy person would say. But stay tuned for some stand-up. Stay tuned for uh, some stuff from Barry. Talk to you soon. But, idiot, when I was in grade two, I was offered a $2 bet to hit my head off everything in that classroom. <laughs> The bet happened the first week of September. The first week of October, I got ringworm on my forehead. <laughs> but like, I'm so dumb, I almost failed religion. <laughs> I think the only way I didn't fail religion was they can't send you to summer school for that. <laughs> and you seem like a very sweet dude, but if I sat next to you in grade 10 math class, and your name was John Woods, I looked over at you and went, you look like you would shoot up the school. <laughs> you wanna know what though? John didn't shoot up the school. Reverse psychology works. You wanna prove me wrong. But no matter how good I was in February, we're now in October. And I'll admit, the last four months I've got a little lazy. The last two months specifically, two months ago when I had my last match in front of this crowd right here, I went home knowing my father was breathing. And within 48 hours, I was giving him CPR to his dead body. That chip may have got a little ash, you may have got a little dust on it. But I turned 30 in about a month and a half. I'm not going to wait till January 1st for my new resolution.
Because the most dangerous man is a motivated man. And you want to know what? Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Holden Albright. And if you think I'm a good person, you're correct. If you think I'm a bad person, you're correct. I'm just an honest person. Because each and every person... Each and every man, woman, thing that I have an issue with knows it because I told them straight to their face. I may be a positive person, I may be a nice person, but that doesn't mean there isn't hate and rage in here. So, I'm here to prove that I'm the most versatile wrestler in this province. I'm one of the toughest son of a gun, and you wanna know what, I'm done talking, because there's a big boy downstairs named Wade Allen, and let's have a hoss fight, bro.